<coughs> Cut off point for exam one material will be through question 1847. Plus, of course, what we do today. Now, we may today find time to get in the stuff which follows question 1847. Should we? Then, any questions regarding such will be on next exam. Or possibly quiz if we have one in there someplace. Another question, which involves indicator behavior and relates to buffers. Question 1843. To get at 1843, you have to first recall question 1835. Question 1835 involved a solution of mythical acid HQ treated with indicator HGX. We analyzed this case previously and found out that M sub I for the HQ solution was 0.2 molar. That's question 1835. You can also recognize from question 1835 what the equilibrium molarities are for HQ, Q minus, as other principal species in the system. We'll pay attention to that if we need it. Now, also recall that the HQ solution considered in question 1835 on treated with HGX indicator showed a color which corresponded to a pH of 1.3. That's a hydronium ion molarity of 5 times 10 to minus 2. So we're taking that solution, pH 1.3, existing hydronium ion molarity, 5 times 10 to minus 2, and we're going to subject it to treatment with sodium hydroxide. And ask the question, how much sodium hydroxide do we have to put in that HQ solution in order to change the pH to 1.7? for which the hydronium ion molarity is 2 times 10 to minus 3. Calculate moles of sodium hydroxide to be added to bring about this pH change. For starters, when we treat the HQ solution with the sodium hydroxide, what's the principal reaction which will occur on this treatment? Hmm? Do you think on tomorrow's activity you'll have to write equations for acid-base reactions? How about all over the place? Well, I put the sodium hydroxide in the HQ solution. What's the principal reaction which occurs? What's the main acid in the HQ solution? What is it? What is it? HQ. HQ? Is an HQ a weak acid? Did we not find it has a Ka value equal to the indicator? Which was 2 times 10 to minus 2? So the main reaction will be HQ plus sodium hydroxide. Resulting in producing What? Water. Water. Q minus. Q minus. Sodium. And of course, putting sodium ions in solution, whose presence we care not about from a pH standpoint. So what we're interested in is the reaction of hydroxide ion with HQ. 
because when you look at the equilibrium constant for H cubed, the Ka equilibrium constant, and you see hydronium ion times molarity hydronium ion, molarity Q minus divided by molarity H cubed, you'll recognize that the pH goes up if the H, pardon me, if the Q minus to HQ ratio is increased or decreased. Well, the Q minus to HQ ratio, molar concentration ratio. For the pH to go up, has that ratio got to increase or decrease? decrease. What is it? Decrease. Let's look at this from a chemist standpoint. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Which of these two species is base? Q minus. Q minus. So if you want the system to get more basic, that's what's happening when the pH goes up, isn't it? The molarity of Q minus relative to that of HQ has got to increase. That's the only way you can make the system more basic. So then, let's take a look at this. Ka for HQ, recall, It's 2 times 10 to the minus 2. That comes from question 35. Let me check to be sure, but I'm... Yeah, that's right. Okay? So if we do this arithmetic, we can find the molarity of Q minus when the hydronium ion concentration is 2 times 10 to the minus 2, which corresponds to a pH of 1.7. Okay? And I asked this question. Because we started with a pH of 1.3 and a hydronium ion molarity of 5 times 10 to minus 2. We treated with sodium hydroxide. That's got to make the pH go up. It's got to make the Q minus molarity go up, while at the same time making the HQ molarity go down, because we added this strong base hydroxide ion. That's the chemistry of the system. That's what you want to do first. If you take a look at any of these problems initially, from a number standpoint, you lose. I'm trying to, trying to get the 2045 people to understand this. Because the ritual they go through with you folks is having you shove numbers in the calculators and push buttons to get answers. Just, that's nonsense. Fourth grader can do that. You gotta teach them chemistry. Let's teach them chemistry. Then they'll know why they're shoving the numbers into the calculator. And they'll know what the result of the shoving the numbers is. What it means. That's what we want. This is chemistry. <laughs> That's what we're trying to do. All right. We paid attention to the chemistry of the system. Now you can do the arithmetic. And you'll find that this is true. Okay? I mean, arithmetic is obvious. Now, if this is true, then what's this? Notice that the hydronium ion concentration which I selected, I mean, which is to be developed, by adding the sodium hydroxide solution, right here. The same as Ka, isn't it? So the Q minus the HQ ratio is equal to what? One. <laughs> equal to one. Well, what's HQ? Point one. So now we get to the $64 question. How much sodium hydroxide had to be added to develop this concentration ratio between Q minus and HQ? 
recognizing, as we said, when we put the sodium hydroxide in the solution, it will react with HQ. Now, when we put the sodium hydroxide in this HQ solution, how much HQ was in the solution? Don't tell me 0 0.2 moles, because we're dealing with a liter, so we have the equivalence between moles and molar concentration. This is M sub I. That's the label on the bottle. And for this solution, like for so many solutions, M sub I tells you how the solution was prepared. It doesn't tell you what is in the solution. It may by serendipity, but as you well know, if you go to the lab and you observe a solution which bears the label 1 capital M-HCl, you've seen this, haven't you? How much HCl is in that solution? Not one damn molecule. None. So, same old story. You've got to know the chemistry which occurs when a solution was prepared in order that you can inventory correctly the solution. You don't have a choice. So how much HQ is actually in that solution? Before we put the sodium hydroxide, the HQ solution, question 1835, where the label on the bottle was 2 tenths molar. I trust you wrote this down, our analysis of this problem. Take a look at what you wrote down. Following question 1835, but before we put in this sodium hydroxide to adjust the pH from 1.3 to 1.7, how many moles of HQ was in the solution? The label on the bottle was 0 0.2. Do you remember for question 1835, in our analysis, we found out that the Q minus molarity was 0.05. I mean, I'm trusting you wrote this down. Which means the actual moles of HQ in our HQ solution after 1835, but before we put in the sodium hydroxide, was 0.15 moles. We got to cheat the two sig figs and then we'll round off to one when we get to the tail end. How much of the HQ did we have to kill? Because here's what we're trying to make. Hmm? How much HQ do we have to kill to convert total moles from 0.15 to 0.1? There's nothing fancy about this. We got to kill how much? 0 0.05 moles. So how much hydroxide ion do we have to add? Will hydroxide ion react with HQ to a large extent? Hey, here's Ka for HQ, right? Look at your acid base table. Look at it. Invaluable information on that table. Do you see hydrogen sulfate ion on our table? Okay, hydrogen sulfate ion, 1.2 times 10 to minus 2. Does hydroxide ion react with hydrogen sulfate ion to a large extent? Yes or no? Yes. Daggone right, very large. And this is a bigger Ka value. So does hydroxide ion react with HQ effectively, large extent? Yes. Absolutely. So, if I want to take and make by this reaction, 0.05 moles of Q minus, because I had 0.05 moles of Q minus in the solution I was treating, so that I wind up with 0.1 mole of Q minus. 
and turn HQ from 0.15 moles to 0.1 mole, hey, I gotta put in this much. Done. That's how many moles of hydroxide ion I have to add. And I left sodium ion out of this because we're really interested in the acid base chemistry. So we add 0.05 moles of sodium hydroxide. Done. The conversion has been achieved. And how do we really understand what have we really done to understand what's going on here? All along the line, we've considered this. There's no other way. You forget this, you lose. You got to know what's in the system in order to be able to deal with the chemistry of the system. From this brutal fact, you cannot escape. Okay, now let's take a look at question 1837. Up, question, page 1837. That's this stuff. First, a reminder. If you go to the laboratory and you see a solution bearing this label and you're asked to report the pH for this solution, what are you going to do first? Chemistry or arithmetic? Hmm? I'm listening. Do you recognize, this is what I want you to recognize, that many students will look at that label and rather than thinking about chemistry, they say, well, the HCl ionizes 100%, that's for sure. No question about that. So in this solution, the hydronium ion concentration is 3 times 10 to minus 8 molar, and from that they calculate the pH. And guess what they wind up with? A pH that's bigger than 7. They just told us that an acid solution is basic because they paid attention to arithmetic rather than chemistry. <laughs> Big trouble when you do that. Chemistry is where it's at. And in this gathering, that's the only place it's at. All right. You did notice these hints I wrote over here. There'll be an abundance of questions on buffers and their behavior, and I'm going to make this buffer solution on exam one from the materials I had written here. If you didn't catch that, Lynn Fahm will upload the video for our lecture conversation right now quite soon after class. So as necessary, you can go and have a look or relook at such. Okay. Question. For a very dilute solution, if you want to get pH, if you want to get hydronium ion concentration for the solution, or hydroxide ion concentration for the solution, beside the chemistry shown by the solute, when the solute is dissolved to make the solution, for our cases HCl reacting with water, what else do we have to consider? We'll write it here as a note.
Fill in the blank. Following yesterday's lecture, you know where we are. You know this is the next topic. And you know it's your job to read and think about this stuff before you show up here. Shall I ask for a show of hands to find out how many of you did this? To find out how many of you are doing your job? Hey, that's what you got to do. I told you all along. Now I'm telling you again. I want you all to be successful in this gathering. But the only real chance you have to be successful is to do what I tell you to do. Period. End of story. You don't follow my directions, you got troubles. Fill in the blank. Yeah. More from a number standpoint, KW. Because when we have such a tiny molarity of a pH affecting solute, it may well be necessary to consider H2O plus H2O producing hydronium ion and hydroxide ion. Now the analysis of the 3 times 10 to minus 8 molar HCl solution is given in detail in the notes, so I'm not going to do that one. I'm going to tackle 5 times 10 to minus 8 molar sodium hydroxide solution, which, will you, which you will see in the notes as question What is the absolutely minimum possible value for the pH for this solution? Minimum possible value. 7.0. Can't be lower than that. And we can stop at 7.0 because this molarity is only one sig fig. Now the pH might be above that, but it can't be lower than that. So just like with the HCl solution, if you look at this and you just do arithmetic and calculate the hydroxide ion molarity on the basis of this value, you get a hydroxide ion molarity 5 times 10 to minus 8, which has a pH less than 7. You just said a basic solution is acidic and chemistry is kaput. So here's what we're going to write. And just so you keep focused on the chemistry, we'll write the equilibrium reaction to which KW corresponds. Now we got to do some stoichiometry. We did this yesterday, now we're going to do it again. Specifically, for our sodium hydroxide solution. How many sources of hydronium ion are there for this solution? Sources of hydronium ion. I heard two sources of hydronium ion. I reject these responses. How many sources of hydronium ion in this solution? Now we got a two change to one. How many accept this? How many don't accept this? Aha! That means we got about 80% of non-voters Let's see. 
I think I'll subtract one billion points from your test score tomorrow. That's one hell of a hole you dug yourself into. I can give you the world's biggest steam shovel and you're not going to dig yourself out of that hole. What are you going to do about it? Hmm? Or, more to the point, will you recognize that in this solution the only source of hydronium ion is that reaction right there? The auto-ionization of water. And this reaction tells us from a stoichiometric standpoint. When this thing goes left to right as written, for every mole, for every mole of this produced, a mole of this is produced. That doesn't mean it makes a mole. Remember, equations for reactions are no guarantees of anything. They're ratios. They're recipes. If then. If this goes to make a mole of this, then it has also gone to make a mole of this. So let's say this has gone to make X. X moles of this. Okay. Which means it also made X moles of hydroxide ion. But in this solution, how many sources of hydroxide ion do we have? Zero. Now the two shouters can speak properly. <laughs> So how do we get the hydroxide ion molarity for this solution? We add the contribution from the two sources. From our solute source, 5 times 10 to minus 8 moles per liter. From our auto ionization of water source, how much? X. X. How about that? And now we got what we want or what we need to crack this puzzle. So I'll go back to KW. And turn this chemical expression into this corresponding algebra expression. Now, if I expand this, I see at a glance I have a quadratic. Which means, of course, you can solve this with this blind man's formula. The quadratic recipe. How many of you know the quadratic formula? How many of you know how to derive it? What's the technique used to derive it? Didn't you do this in algebra class? When I first started to teach this stuff a long time ago, I said, okay, I'll let you use the quadratic formula if you can derive it. I had no takers. I guess everybody forgot how to complete the square, because that's the way you derive it. It's not hard. But then I said, the hell with that. That's interfering with understanding chemistry. So I'm not doing that. If I see any signs of use of quadratic formula on the exam, I'm given zero credit. I don't give a damn about somebody coming along saying, I got the right answer. <laughs> You're here to learn chemistry. And that's what we want. And if you do anything which stands in the way or impedes progress toward learning chemistry, I'm not a happy camper. So I'm going to look at this chemically and recognize that the concentration of hydronium ion, in this instance represented by X, has got to compare how to 1 times 10 to minus 7. This is what I want to think about before I start doing any solving. How must the molarity of hydronium ion for this solution compare to 1 times 10 to minus 7? Anyway. Now you made the solution acidic. I said hydronium ion. Oh, okay, sorry. Lord. How much the concentration of hydronium ion compared to 1 times 10 to the minus 7? Well, for starters, it's got to be 1 times 10 to the minus 7 if the hydroxide ion molarity is 1 times 10 to the minus 7, or else the hydronium ion concentration got to be smaller than 1 times 10 to the minus 7. Now let's make a better comparison. 
if the hydronium ion concentration is smaller than 1 times 10 to minus 7? Could it be a lot smaller? I'm asking about the value for x compared to 1 times 10 to minus 7. Has it got to be very close to 1 times 10 to minus 7? Or can it be far away from 1 times 10 to minus 7? I'm asking. It's gotta be close. I'm hearing votes for got to be close. All right, back up that vote. Tell me why. Because what? Weak base. Hydroxide is not a weak base. But I want to know why the value for x if it isn't 1 times 10 to minus 7, can't be much smaller than 1 times 10 to minus 7. This is a daggone dilute solution, isn't it? Whatever the pH is for this solution, if it isn't 7, it's got to be close to 7. That means the hydronium ion concentration, if it isn't 1 times 10 to minus 7, can only be a little bit smaller than 1 times 10 to minus 7. Good. Now we got chemistry. Pick me a value for x that's a little bit smaller than 1 times 10 to minus 7. Now listening, we're going to write down try x equals. 7 times 10 to the negative 8. All right, we're going to try 7 times 10 to minus 8. That's smaller than 1 times 10 to minus 7, but not significantly so. So we'll accept that as a trial value. So here we go. <coughs> 7 times 10 to the minus 8 times 12 times 10 to the minus 8. Now here comes the tough arithmetic. 7 times 12. What's that equal? I'm listening, and I don't want to see any push buttons. What is it? There's the result of this arithmetic. How close is that to KW? If I rewrite this, it's 0.84 times 10 to the minus 16. I'm four, minus 14. And I only got one sig fig, so it would be 0 0.8 times 10 to the minus 14. That's close, but it's smaller. You think it's possible there's a better answer? Yes. If there is a better answer, it will be because x is bigger or smaller than 7 times 10 to the minus 8. Bigger. Try x equals 8 times 10 to the minus 8. Hey, we got x in a box. If it ain't 7 times 10 to the minus 8, it's 8 times 10 to the minus 8, or 9 times 10 to the minus 8, or 1 times 10 to the minus 7. It can't be anything else because we only got one sig fig. We got it in a box. It's a small box. Here we go. Watch out. 8 times 13. This is a little bigger than KW, if we stretch significant figures. This is smaller. Which one is closer to KW? Which one? This one, isn't it? So what's hydronium ion concentration? Here it is. And the pH, if my memory is right, is 7.1. You can do the arithmetic. Now then, let's have more fun, because we like to have fun. Let's go to hydronium ion concentration, because once we have that, we can get pH. That's nothing but additional arithmetic.
This is a pretty dilute solution. <laughs> yeah, 5 times n of minus 7 molar. But this time is a solute, is a solute which is an acid that's weaker than water. Uh, pardon me, an acid that's weaker than hydronium ion. In this solution, at this very tiny molarity, to what extent do you think acetic acid will ionize? You remember all the concentration, I mean the hydronium ion concentration analyses we did for previous acetic acid solutions? I'm just curious. Do you remember, for example, finding that? I don't remember the question number, but you did it earlier on, I believe last week, Friday, in discussion class gathering. Pretty sure it was this concentration of acetic acid. Let me check to be sure. <laughs> Let's see, where are you? Acetic acid solution. Yeah, that's it. 1826. Put that down here. Now you found for this solution that the hydronium ion molarity was this, or was it 3.4? You folks did this. You remember the answer? Let me check on it. 3.2 or 3.4? Oh, 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 I think it was 3.4. 3.4? Good. So, for 1 times 10 to minus 5 molar acetic acid to two, uh, 10 to minus 4 molar, two sig figs. Notice this 5 times 10 to minus 7 molar. This is much more dilute. What's the ionization extent of acetic acid? This solution. Of course, to answer this, you have to remember the recipe for ionization extent. Have you recognized that this recipe is on the information sheet? Again, I'm, I don't hold you responsible for remembering this stuff. I want you to be able to use it. Molarity of derived species divided by m sub i times 100%. Well, for this solution, here's m sub i. Here's molarity of hydronium ion. And for this solution, since it's a single solute solution, we well expect the acetate ion molarity to be the same as this. So what's the ionization extent of acetic acid? This solution. 34%. Nothing fancy about this. Now, I want you to take a quick peek before we proceed with our acetic acid solution analysis. At page 1839. It's page you're just following this stuff.
page 1839, which we'll comment about more extensively in just a few minutes, shows us how to determine percent or extent of ionization for a weak acid or weak base in water solution. And the considerations made on page 1839 start by realizing that at a point of dilution called infinite, infinite dilution, the hydronium ion molarity for the solution has got to be what? Acetic acid solution, sulfuric acid solution, hydrochloric acid solution, sodium hydroxide solution, ammonia solution, I don't care what it is. At infinite dilution, what's the pH for the solution? 7.00. The hydronium ion concentration, hydroxide ion concentration each to 2 sig figs, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7. Cause that at infinitely, under infinitely dilute conditions, practically speaking, you got pure water, don't you? Let's create a very, 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 very dilute solution for acetic acid. If you live in an apartment complex in Gainesville or here at UF, you see swimming pools, don't you? You like to use the swimming pools? I do. Let's fill up the swimming pool with deionized water. All this deionized water. Maybe it's a 100,000 gallon swimming pool full of deionized water. I'm going to, with my super micro microscopic tweezers, catch one acetic acid molecule. Ha <laughs> ha, just one and drop it in my swimming pool. Would you agree that's, practically speaking, acetic acid solution at infinite dilution? Okay. The $64 question is, for acetic acid molecule, will it still be the acetic acid molecule? under these extremely dilute conditions, or will it be hydronium ion and acetate ion? Would it be hovering between the two? Hovering. Like, like switching It's a helicopter. Like, like changing, it'll be changing conformations. Like, Do you think so? I, I like it in an yeah. All right, we got to vote for the possibility of changing conformations. Now, in one respect, your vote is correct. Kind of because you'll have the acetic acid reaction with water, hydronium ion acetate ion, that's an equilibrium reaction. All right, go on, qualify. So it'll, it'll spend more time as HAC than as AC minus. And is that your contention? I think so. All right, yes it is. Okay. I would agree kind of the opposite with that. that You're going to agree with the opposite? <laughs> well, I would say that there'd be, um, there's been more time in the AC and the HAC because you're increasing the amount of water so it's going to be a Ford reaction more so in the reverse. All right, I mean, we got a couple of ideas on the board. Now, we're going to play a different game. I got another swimming pool. Same size. All right. And I'm going to catch one particle of sodium acetate. Which means one sodium ion and one acetate ion. Now I can't do this, but I can talk about it. So in my one swimming pool, I got one molecule of acetic acid. And in the other swimming pool, I got one sodium ion and one acetate ion. Now we don't care about sodium ion from a pH standpoint. What will be the nature of acetate ion and the acetate ion containing swimming pool? Spend more time as the ion AC 
rather than HAC because the K of acetic acid is greater than the KD of acetic How much greater? A lot. Give me a value for a lot. Something times 10 to the negative 5. When you go 10 to the minus 5, you're making something smaller. I mean 10 to the fifth. 10 to the fifth. Well, KB acetate ion is 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10. KA acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. So the ratio you're looking for is going to be about 3 or 4 times 10 to the fifth in favor of KA acetic acid. Okay? But a big difference. The KA value for acetic acid is far greater than the KB for its conjugate base. All right? Now then, do you agree that in the acetic acid containing swimming pool, if this goes to a large extent, this is going to a small extent. But if in the acetate ion containing swimming pool, this goes to a large extent, this goes to a small extent. Or are you going to believe that because of the dilution, these reactions are each proceeding to a large extent? I'm curious what, what you think about. There's no question the dilution factor is enormous. It? I don't want to know. I want. I don't want it. I don't know what it is. The acetate ion will remain as it is rather than go to a large Well, what about the acetic acid? Um, the acetic acid will remain as it is rather than go to a large Oh, the acetic acid will go to a large Acetic acid goes large extent. Yeah. Okay. And you argued that because Ka acetic acid is much greater than Kb acetate ion. Yeah. Okay. Do you realize when this reaction occurs that it's just like making the other solution? Because if I put in one molecule of acetic acid and this goes, I'm making one acetate ion. And the acetate ion is surrounded by this huge sea of water molecules. And only one hydronium ion made by this reaction. So it's far more likely the acetate ion would react with water if it's going to react than it is with this hydronium ion. Okay? But as we've noted, Ka acetic acid is far greater than Kb acetate ion. The upshot of which, I'm just now going to make a statement and then we'll defend this in a moment, which you'll see on page 1839 is that if Ka or Kb is a number that's greater than 1 times 10 to minus 7 dilution can achieve percent ionization Well, let's put it down as ionization extent. Ionization extent. Greater than 50%. Okay? But, if Ka or Kb less than 1 times 10 to minus 7, dilution cannot achieve ionization extent as great as 50%. Now this, these statements really are telling us what's going on here. Practically speaking, in the acetic acid swimming pool, the acetic acid molecule will go away. 
because it's k value, k value is a lot bigger 1 times 10 to minus 7. So we can well expect it to be ionized to an extent which is far greater than 50 percent. But acetate ion KB is 5.6 times 10 to minus 10, which is far smaller than 1 times 10 to minus 7. So we can well expect the acetate ion in the acetate ion containing, containing swimming pool will practically speaking remain as such. So with this at hand, we go back to this. Because we found out, as a reference point, if I have 10 to the minus 4 molar acetic acid, the ionization extent of acetic acid is 34%. This is a much more dilute solution. And so, given that this is a much more dilute solution, and rather parallels our acetic acid molecule swimming around in a swimming pool, to what kind of extent do you think the acetic acid will ionize in this solution? Might it be 60? 53? 62? Close to 100. Close to 100%. Let's see if we can find out. Okay? And in addition to finding out, remember this question. So for our acetic acid solution, we want to find out two things. What's the hydronium ion concentration? And what's the ionization extent? Or percent? Let's put it this way. Percent ionization of acetic acid. Oh, I didn't want to erase that. Chemistry. For solute acetic acid, we've got to pay attention to this equilibrium, which by definition corresponds to Ka acetic acid. Okay, so far? What else do we have to consider for this solution in order to get this solution property? Yeah! These two reactions tell us, in this solution, there's only one source of acetate ion. That's this reaction. There's only one source of hydroxide ion. <coughs> That's this reaction. But how many sources of hydronium ion? Two. If this reaction is also proceeding to an extent large enough to make a contribution to the hydronium ion concentration. Let's find out. so I don't go too close to the bottom of the board, which makes it tough for the folks near the back to see what's going on. For this, So as things presently stand, we got a solution for which we want to know this, and at present we don't know this, we don't know this, and we don't know this. So at present it appears that we have, how many unknowns? At present, don't know this, don't know this, don't know this, 
Don't know this. Do we have four unknowns? Now let's be real about this. How many unknowns do we really have? How many unknowns do we really have? Two. two. I agree. Why do we only have two? So we know the concentration of H and C. Mm-hmm. We know this. Is that material balance for acetic acid? And we know this. Hmm? We got two unknowns. And we got two equations. So can we crack this puzzle? Yeah, we can crack this puzzle. Well, let's proceed with the puzzle cracking. I'm going back to this relationship, okay? And I'm going to write over here. Five point zero times 10 to minus 7 minus the acetate ion molarity. Okay? And that I already wrote. What would you do now to proceed with solving? Well, I want to know what the speculation is to be placed on. What speculation do I make? How you set AC minus to X. And then no, that's not a speculation. That's an algebra statement. Speculation for the acetate The constitution of the acetate No, wait. You were programmed with this, so I thought, earlier on in discussion class. When you're dealing with a solution of a solute that's a weak acid or weak base, like we got here, solute's a weak acid, okay? What speculation do you make? I'm not hearing anything sharply and clearly. To solve speculate on fill in the blank I guess you got a problem tomorrow you don't know what to put in the blank. Well, what's this solution contain as the solute? What does the net hydronium ion concentration for this solution depend on beside the water-water reaction? <laughs> we got that. It depends on the extent to which this equilibrium goes left to right, doesn't it? So, the speculation that we want to make is When I speculate on a value for the acetic acid ionization extent, that fixes the equilibrium molarity of acetic acid, fixes the equilibrium molarity of acetate ion. So I now will have these two values, won't I? And then I can calculate the hydronium ion concentration based on these two values, can't I? And then I can see if I get equivalence with KW. 
And that's what I do. I play with the numbers until I can see that both equilibrium constants are satisfied. I'm going to write this. What I want you to do is based on 98% ionization extent for acetic acid. I'm telling you the ionization extent, okay? Given that we've recognized that that's the speculation that we have to make. To see if both equilibrium constants are satisfied with this ionization extent for acetic acid. You'll find out that it is. No more, no less. You do the arithmetic. Now we are really just starting to get at problems of this nature. <coughs> problems of this nature parallel the culmination of analysis of bronsted lowry acid base solutions, which I hope you recall, I told you when we started this acid base stuff, that when we get through chapter 18, you'll be able to take any water solution whatever it may be. And for species who lives, whose lives, whose existence depends on pH, be able to de analyze the solution so as to be able to report the molarity for each and every one of these solution species correctly. That's pretty powerful stuff. So this is giving you an idea where we are going to proceed but for exam one we'll go back to this and stop there okay so things of this nature if I ask anything like this on exam one I'll give you enough information so you can proceed through with it but I probably won't Do, 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 do.